check my staff so online. Proud of anything you they do. Go online. I be proud blogger. Go online. So he media dot com. Go online. Go check my staff so online. Proud of anything you they do. Go online. Hey, we went down the chat with a bad boy. I was like, why do you call him bad boy? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But somebody wants me to ask if you're married. Um, I'm divorced. Um, I was married to a wonderful person. Mm. She's, she's, she's white. Mm. And Your wife was white? Yes. Okay. yes. You know, I believe in all that interracial, yeah. you know, cultural melting yeah. point of the world. You are Kwame Kumar, yes, yeah. right? Kwame married and yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear that brother kind of like <laughs> <laughs> I like I hear that brother like that across the pond. Yeah man. And all power to Kwame for sure does the game. So <laughs> yeah, Kwame will love you man. Yeah you're so, a bad boy. Yeah, true, yes, man. Man. For real man. I mean this Kwame is a bad boy too. Yeah he was a bad boy man. We love him. Yeah we love him. We love him. So anyways um <laughs> I hooked up, but you know, it was really founded on mutual respect, love. Um, yeah. But there are certain considerations. Mm -hmm. Around that time, I, I just lost my mom. Um, my mom happened to be my best friend and my mm -hmm. business partner, by all intents and purposes. And, and then, you know, she was also a great businesswoman. So, yeah. there are just things I didn't find my fifth in a while because, you know, I did the African phenomenon where I had to be strong and not show emotion mm -hmm. all through. And you know that we're the ones that suffer most. That's true. Yes, and they are the, yes, at the end. Yeah, the women cry, the, the, they get on with it. I they know the whole philosophy of venting, mm. of releasing that energy of hurt. We pack it in and act like Superman. We and box then it we, 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 we box it up. <laughs> and at the end of the day, we get boxed in. You know? So that's what happened to me. Yeah, I didn't have anything to give emotionally, mm. and I was doing that. You know, so I, I took full responsibility for that for, feeling. For that feeling. Yes, and then at the end of the day, um, the kind of presence of mind that she possessed, you know, she quickly forgave, mm -hmm. came back to the table, and said, "We brought a wonderful gift to the world. We have a son." Okay, you, you know, had you had one we child. Have a son, yeah, yeah, you have. So we, we decided let's 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 make it happen. Mm -hmm. child, let's, mm -hmm. let's take it to let's prove to mm -hmm. ourselves. So it's never been about the work. The reason nobody heard about it is because I exist in this realm, as I told you about. Yeah. Nobody had access to that realm, and nobody can. You know how people spend resources mm -hmm. to be seen and heard? I spend resources not to be seen and heard. That is an advice. That is, that's what I'm telling you. Yeah. Different you spend level. resources not to be seen and heard. My first level, mm. I was open out. I existed in the white hot space. That's mm -hmm. the white hot space where the hotel musicians, actors, sculptors, anybody that's a creative exists there. Okay. You can't inhabit that space for too long. Okay. Or you'll be found you'll wanting. Be found wanting yeah. yeah, so you have to exist it every time. Mm -hmm. It's your next album, your next film, your next work that will define your place in that entity. Okay. But that time you're hot, everybody want a picture, everybody saying he's the baddest, the coolest, the president. Don't get comfortable. Mm. The first place where dreams and visions go to die is the comfort zone. Mm. And that place informs comfort. You leave it. I left, I stayed there too long. I stayed there too In long. The comfort zone. I was there too long. Mm. When I discovered myself and I existed that space, I moved on. The next um, space was where I started to understand this business. Mm. That was where I did all my feeling. I failed back to back for three years. For three years. Everything I put my hands in was not working. Everything I tried to raise was not working. Every time it worked, and I had to move on because I, I'm not a good gatekeeper. Mm. I'm great at opening doors. And as a matter of fact, I'm genius at opening doors. But I don't know how to man the gate. Because my what mind is of, nimble. I have to be. What kind of doors are we talking about? Every door, my brother. Every door. Both physical and mental <laughs> yeah. and spiritual. Yeah. Define it anyhow you like. And gender I just doors. open doors. And gender doors, my brother. <laughs> I just open doors. But I don't know how to keep the doors open. <laughs> you open and you lay them. I just open. <laughs> my brother. Eh? Define it anyway you can't. So, anyway. Oh, he's a bad boy. This is a lazy problem. Oh, you're a bad boy. When you're talking serious, it's a lazy can you just stick to the subject? Okay, okay, color? okay let's go back You're to the subject. You're a serious man. Stop yeah, doing okay, this. Okay, I'm sorry. But yes, I opened yes, doors. You opened doors. Yeah. So, <laughs> at the end of the day, I understood how to open it. Mm. But then, finding people that would man the door yeah. was a problem. I always found people that had different qualification, but had far less passion than I did. You mm. know, the passion that you do this with, they put somebody behind it, it will never be the same, no matter how gifted the person is. Passion is everything in this life. 
through the passion of knowledge, I use my money that I want this to succeed. I will work day and night compared to anybody. In every room I walk into, I've only seen more gifted people than me. Mm. Every room I walk into, I've only seen far better trained people than mm. you are. But I'll tell you what I've never seen in a room, someone that will at work me. You work harder than all. I've never seen anybody that will at work me. You have to be on self slavery mm. to at work. Yeah. Because I'll wake up 5 a.m. if need be. Mm. I will do what it takes. I'll, I've done the 24 hour run on the business chase mm. that didn't get me to sleep for 48 hours till I got it. Wow. And most times I do, I don't even get it. So okay, it's not, it's, it, it, it is not all, you know, all, no, all, all, no, all no, no, that's what you don't yeah. know. That, that's what You've been through the hassle. Been, you know, so. so the feeling, I wonder, I remember one time I went back to my father, he said, Is this a spiritual thing? Mm. I was going to ask you, but the did you think it was a spiritual thing? No. That's the misnomer. That's the African context. Mm. We built this narrative from the beginning of our blueprint where they've embedded into the north and mismanaged our brain. That's why it looks like these white folks are something more than because of the way they were raised. And that's why I decided my generation we will be raised differently. If you speak to them, something is different. Four languages, keen, curious, understanding of even the ways of life, far ahead of everybody. Mm. He's barely seven. He will read you before you sit down. Wow. I taught him that. Mm -hmm. I had to. I had to prepare for things that failed me. So my narrative was in the beginning was a religious narrative mostly. I was told that I have to pray till my head hurt. Mm. I have to pray upside down sometimes and call this God. <laughs> what, are you, what are you forcing that kind of analogy me for? Mm. Every time something went wrong in my life, there's an uncle chasing me from the village or something <laughs> that projected something that's wrong. Okay. Every time my business, I didn't wake up in the morning to force a relation. Every time I bumped a bridge, I didn't chase people I'm supposed to chase to get narratives from me. I used my personal money instead of going to an institution that was funded for it. Mm. And I put in my money and I brought friends instead of people that want to be loyal to me as Jamaica. I'll go and bring an all that that is close to me. Mm. And when the business fails, it's a game of sentiment. Yeah. I could have been less sentimental and brought somebody from the street to run my business. Someone that would jump when I say so mm. and ask how high. I mm. want to do it because he wants to leave. Mm. Not somebody that will get away from it. When I tell you, you stole my money, go and call my mother to beg. You know? So that was, they were the mistakes. There was nobody chasing me from my village. There was no mm. uncle that was projecting you no know, hocus pocus on my behind. Mm. I sat down, understood it, I spoke to my dad, and my dad told me that there's nothing. From day one, you were positioned for certain things, you were positioned to be great. Wake up in the morning and start recognizing who you are. Mm. They're sheep and they're lions. I've been born and raised a lion. There's no other way. I, every time I try to play like a sheep, I undermine myself. So I wake up the morning, stand in front of a mirror, remind me who I am, then I go out. I think it's been changing. Yeah. And it kept changing and changing. And every time it changed, I'll, I'll up the game. Every time it changed, I'll up the game. Does it mean you are not a religious person? I am extremely religious. But this time there's a different prayer. Mm. There's a prayer pray to God and he won't answer you because he don't understand you or your power. Okay. My prayer became shorter. My mm. action became longer. Mm. As opposed to my prayer being longer, my action short. That's most Christians do. That's that's most Christians do. Since I wake up and I say, God, you've gifted me, you know, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm short on morals. Make me better there. Mm. But I'm gonna go out there. I want to thank you for get, bringing this thing home. As opposed to bless what I'm going to do, mm. I hope the other person sees from God blesses them. No, 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 no. My narrative is I've brought it home. I've spoken it into existence. I've seen it. I've taken the future. It's just the process of walking to it that I just have to do. And so every time it fails, I'll come back. Instead of self-blame and finger pointing, I will look at myself yeah. and say, what is, what is wrong here and there? I'm not saying spiritually certain things don't exist in the African context. You understand what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. But I also understand that my Adam believe, yeah. my belief in God has protected me. I mean, how can it be possible that I protect myself? Don't mm. you even understand it? I'm crazy. Yeah. I've jumped mountains. I've jumped from bridges. I've, I've done everything I can to, to end my life. Wow. What has been the longest period because or time that a Jamaica has prayed to God? Two hours. Did that's why I swear. I was, when I was trying to find strength after I lost my mom, I sat down and I had a long conversation with God that, well, how am I supposed to carry on from now? I mean, what is next for me? Mm. You know, and it happened at a time where I feel I've achieved a lot already. So what is next? Should I just retire, take my little money, mm. invest it properly, look after my child, find a woman that loves me for me, mm. and just get on with this thing called living? 
But is there more for me to do? Is there something else you want out there for me? What else is there? Because I think you've given me everything far too young. But there's nothing. I don't feel there's anything else I owe anybody. Mm -hmm. Where you have a problem is where you feel you have to ascribe and ascend to people's expectations of you all the time. Mm -hmm. Every goal I've set for myself was informed by me. Not by how well Allah is doing or how well Fred is doing. Mm -hmm. I'm deaf, blind, and mute to what other people are doing. Every lane that people try to get onto for competition with others is clogged with traffic. Mm -hmm. The only lane that is traffic free is your lane. I've stayed on my lane all through. That's why it took me a longer, more arduous road to get there. But now that I've possessed it, mm. I'm a master of this lane. You can't come into this lane and tell me nothing. Because I'm a master of this lane. Yeah. Okay, so I, I choose and pick what will succeed for me. Because I know that you are at random picking everything that society expects you to succeed on. Yeah. I choose. That's why whenever I make a choice, it succeeds. Because I've analyzed it, it is meant for me, not for anyone else. I choose Accra for Pima to succeed. I choose this it to succeed. You won't force me to go to South Africa and do a premium. I refuse. No matter how well set up it is, if it's not based yeah, with my instinct. Okay. One of the things I'm trying to say is that your instinct will be so informed, you've honed your instincts to a point, you don't need any expert to tell you where you go. So, so what, when you choose a place, maybe you choose Ghana to premiere a movie and your instinct tells you to come to Ghana and when you know that the Ghanaian cinema industry is down, won't you think twice? But we have a crowd there. Doesn't the, the day of the premium there yeah. was a crowd? Doesn't that define that it is not about the normal human statistics? Mm. Your projection humanly mm. is that the industry is down. Mm. My projection is that I found love in this land anytime I come. Mm. All I need to do is filter into it. Mm. And into what I want, I desire will happen. And then what was my mental, spiritual preparation before I came before here? I, I saw the end, spoke it into existence, day in, day out. On the plane, in the 45 minute flight, I went to the bathroom three times to say, this is my desire before I land in this time. I need possession. Mm. I need to conquer it. Mm. I need to live this dream. I need to prove to somebody else that what I've done in six cities in my country can be done in a foreign land. Mm. So three times I said it and I came down. And by the time I touched down here, you can't tell me nothing. If I walked into that place and I saw two people, I've lived my dream. That's how, that's the difference between you and I. Yeah. I would not feel disappointed. Yeah, I would not be disappointed. Those two, God sent them, I swear, among those two, one of them will offer me a deal and I'll cover what I expected on the next day. Mm. You I promise look, you. You're always looking at the positives. I've never done, I don't do regrets in my life. I don't understand what it means. You, don't, regret, you don't understand regrets. I've lived my life and regret the first 30 years of my existence on earth. Mm. Everything I didn't do right now, every relationship I messed up, I regret. Every family member that, that didn't, I didn't live up to their standards, I regret. Every time my dad spoke to me, certain way, I said, oh, is this man looking at me like, is he wishing he had more sons? I'm mm. his only son. Okay. I regret. Every time that the mother of my child says something that was not towards me, oh, look at what this other person, I regret. Nah. So when we are here and scared of um, shooting and taking them to the cinema because we think the cinema culture is down, you didn't see that way? I didn't see that way. That film it, is there. It's going to be one of the highest grossing Marvel film in that cinema. Mm. It's going to happen like that. Because you believe so? Because I know so. You know so? Mm. Based on no statistics? That, that I don't need statistics. Tell me who has ever changed the world based on statistics. At the cops of every inventory, every change in the world, mm. people that changed the world only did it when the statistics were down, when nobody believed. Every Kanye West, every Steve Jobs, every Donatola, every, every uh, you know, um, um, Michael D'Angelo, they only mm. did something at the cops of when there was no belief. Mm. You know, but they believed, they saw the future, they spoke it into existence. I. I crossed my budget five times mm. for for bad comment. At the fourth crossing, um, something strange happened that mm. made me have the conviction of what I am. Mm. Okay, mm. Um, I invested our real estate deal just cashed out. That was what gave me the impetus to move mm. because we sold it out in no time. So we're on the next move. I didn't know my partners. Mm. God forgive me, I'm saying this on national. They connived against me. Whoa. Because they felt that, okay, um, let's filter this money immediately into the next project. 
my thought was that as CEO and you know, majority shareholder, money will be shared. Mm. I'll take mine and go and do what I want, which is invest in my passion project. That is what they thought. This film thing is his passion project. Yeah. So they stifled funds for me. Oh. They didn't sign into being our agreement. So I didn't have liquids to push my agenda. And I just sat down there. You know, all that time, I told them to keep shooting. I what, told them what you're going through. I did, to I did, I and I would, don't forget, I'm lead actor. Mm. So I'm expected to come and perform every day. The psychological yes, readiness. Psychological, yes. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be but affected. I didn't sleep for five days. I promise you, I probably slept less than six hours in those five days. Mm. Every night I'll sit up and be wondering what is going on. So this is the shame coming. I'm going to promise it's going to stop and people won't understand that it's not as if I don't have money it's just that there's a conspiracy against me and you know what I never I didn't be any grudge against them because they thought they were acting in my best interest they just thought this guy is throwing money mm -hmm. down the drain that so they they did it as an intervention because these guys one is my brother-in-law the other one is a very close friend so these were not enemies mm. these were just people that were like oh wait he moved 50 million oh wait he moved another 80 million Oh, in films, seriously, because their thought was like, I feel suppose 40 million, you understand yeah. me? So, maybe we better stop this guy mm. before he bankrupts himself. Mm. So, so, they were acting your best interest. On my best interest. But you were acting on but, your but me, passion. me, five years ago would have gone to war. Would then? Yes. <laughs> I'm at war, my brother doesn't end well for the person. Because I would have cut everybody off, mm. disassociated myself, moved lawyers. Man, I would have destroyed that company. Wow. For, because of anger. Every time I act with emotion, mm. I've always considered myself a good um, average intelligence. I've always said that I set precedences. Every time I do something mediocre, it's always because my emotion took the better of me. Oh, okay. So those five days wasn't fear. It was telling my emotion to behave. Mm. That's all. I needed to control myself. So every time the anger came, the dispassion came, the disappointment came, even a few tears. Mm. Yes, I, I'm, I'm, I cried the third day. Like, the book you wrote, is it about your challenges? It's about everything in life. Mm. It's a 31 series. Mm. And self-development. We discuss every subject under the sun, how to deal with disappointment. So this is me, I wrote a book about disappointment and I'm about to disappoint myself. Mm. So after the fourth day, I took control of my emotion. The fifth day I called. And I said, let's do a video call. We did. I wanted to see the face and said, I founded this company. Mm. You guys don't release money. They said, no, we feel that we should move on to our next project. I thanked them, said it's for the best interest of the company, and I caught the phone. And they were scared shitless because mm. they thought that this guy is about to do something dangerous. I left them. I went back to my company and I said, what is going on? 40% of my cast, the count, asked, 40% of them left. The, and they, left my set. they left the set and said, oh, okay, he's not coming through with money anymore. Da, 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 da. Oh, we're seeing a big cousin all over the place that we hear there's a the money. I left. Nobody, even my sister that was the accountant said, is there a problem? I said, no. Okay, so that means on set you ran out of cash. Yes. And they decided to leave yes. because the there's no money coming. Cash. No, they, they, I didn't, they didn't even know there was a They just said, renew our contract. Mm. I said, no. It wasn't, they didn't even think it was about money. They just, they just, you know, sus suspected, suspected that it's going to be about money. Yeah. And maybe you because when you money. stop doling out the money, people stop finding finding favors. Yeah. You. So when it happened, my own sister mm. said, "How come I'm not getting inflows mm. to deal with certain things?" I said, "You know what? I made a mistake. I shifted money a bit. Money is coming." My belief was that I said Monday. I told everybody Monday. And you see, when you make pro promises, be careful. Mm. Never make promises out of a out place of, of yeah. you know, faith or pressure. I told them Monday, this day was going to go through. Mm. On Saturday, I got a call. Okay? I went to a meeting. Now, that call was wrong. The call you had on yes, Saturday? Yes, it was a call I didn't want to go. Mm. Because it's somebody I did business with in America that felt, because then it was bigger than me, I mean, financially and otherwise, it took that deal from me. Oh. I set up that deal. I, I brought this person in from Nigeria. He's a Nigerian billionaire. I don't want to call his name. I brought him in. I was very close friends with 50 Cent. You were close to yes. friends um, with 50 there was, Cent? Yes. There was, there, was, um, there was a deal for Ethan Walker. 
if I say much, or they will know where. So anyway, there was a deal I was going to bring him into. We wanted to buy FM Walker Africa. Okay. So I set up the deal. I had a certain amount I was told to. So I said I have had half. I told this guy, this chairman, come, come do this. Share my stakes with me, mm -hmm. and he came. And then because then that's what another thing I told you about leaving things in the hands of people. Yes, yes. So I left it in his hands with his lawyers to him. Yes. And you know, I got papers with a far lesser stick mm. than we have agreed. And I said, my brother, what is this? He said, oh, because he brings. I said, Are you crazy? I brought this money. I brought. Would you be in this land talking to him if, it, if I didn't say for me? And they took it off my face. So I destroyed it. Oh. Uh, from the top, that's another thing I love about him. He doesn't tolerate this law. I called him and said, See what's going to happen. He said, No, what, Joe? This deal is not happening. And we struck it. Mm. So this guy felt humiliated. He felt bad because it was them having meetings behind my back. I'll call this guy, Where are you? I was in Atlanta. He was in New York, sitting in there. You know, sitting with them. He didn't know they were bringing the post back to me. This lawyer is Mike. He's a Jewish guy, very straightforward guy. They'll come and say, Do you know your guy is here? Just to protect my guy. I say, Yeah, yeah. I know he's here. I call my guy, my guy will tell me, oh, he's in Atlanta. I say, hmm. <laughs> I know, know, I know. 55 year old man be lying this kind of chip. I left him. Then, at the end of the day, because I didn't call him out, the president hear about it, I didn't go to the internet and start doing all this little boyish thing. Mm -hmm. I just left him. He died a natural death. So, naturally, he didn't sleep well. Because there's some people that like this trouble, they thrive in this space. I don't have time. I moved on. But he didn't sleep well for a long time. Mm -hmm. So, he called me and said, I have a deal. And I said, no, I can't do business with you because you're so... He yeah. said, I have a deal. See me. He set up a meeting at night. When I looked at my circumstances, and looked at how long it took this guy to call me, I knew he was the one that would solve my problem. Another thing is discernity. So I went to the meeting. By Monday, I had forms in excess of five times. Wow. Because it was a quick one. They just needed an introduction. And it happened to be someone that was dear to me, a minister that was more like a godfather. And they've tried with all his power and his clout. Apparently, he wasn't sitting well with the recent power that be, the recent party. Mm. He's a very powerful man, but he went to a different party. Okay, so he doesn't belong, he doesn't belong to the new party, so they cut him off completely. Okay. And this guy is a chieftain of this new party, this APC that is there mm. now. So he couldn't have access. And this was a deal of 24 hours window. Wow. Or they would have gone to somewhere that would take them to him. So he remembered it. He's only seen picture. Somebody called him and said, Hey, Jim, Jim is like a son to this guy. Mm. They called me. I said, I don't want to. And he, he laid the deal. And this time I walked in there and said, I want 60%. I want to yeah. And because of the fact, he said, No. He, I knew he fought behind the scene, but I was only smiling my face. <laughs> he signed it. You can't trace He signed it. And I did better than that. I took them to his home. We all had lunch. We finished it. And right there, I also got a cut from that other end. Well. And you know what he said? He didn't even want it. They should give it to him. Because he knew what I was going through. Yeah. Too. He said, he should give it to his son. So I took both ways. People watching you and listening to you are all amazed. Do you know why? You see, you're more like a motivation speaker. Yeah. They are learning a lot from you. Yeah, I, I took it. And by Monday, I came back. Even my sister. But when the film was done, I sat them down, two of them, mm. and said, this is what I went through. And they just, but they're used to me and doing things like that. But that was to teach them that you don't come and complain and moan about your circumstances. God always provides a way. But the thing is that, do you see it that way? That you're, you're born and designed to resolve problems. Mm. You know? It's not, it's not a problem, it's, except you see it as a problem. I never thought it was a problem. All this time, everything I was thinking wasn't fear. Mm. Because once you buy into the narrative of fear, you fail. Mm -hmm. I wasn't looking at fear and anxiety. My problem was how to control my emotion. Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't do something that will hurt me. But let me ask you, what is fear to you? How do how would you Jimai, define fear? Fear has never been existent in my life. So the last time I had fear that you said regret is not in your it's not in my And fear now fear is too isn't in your dictionary. I'll tell you how far I deal with fear. The last time I had fear after I had my son, my my sisters come to a meeting and we know we lost our mom and they said you have to stop this crazy thing you do. You know, I climb mountains and I jump off, I jump from airplanes, I do bungee. So they say, listen, I don't understand anybody that's tried so hard to kill themselves like you. You need to stop. It. You, know, you, have, you, have, you have a son now. You know, if, you, if you don't want to leave for all, leave for him. Well, tell me, where did you get this thing from? Our father is the safest driver in the world. We sit in the car, we are busy at the balance, so we're going there in 10 years. You know? So where did he get it from? I got it from my mom though. My mom was a cowboy man. Okay. You know, she was she was the, the you know the heart of lion, you know. But she married the perfect man. 
the person that plays is sick. <laughs> my dad is a sick player. He's like he's that guy that calculates. My dad is a scientist of calculation. He will calculate to take ten steps to get to this place. <laughs> if you do eleven steps, you miss your mark. My mom will probably calculate forty steps and crossing and then jump backwards. So that's that's the narrative and yeah. i sat them down and i explained to them that you don't give in to fear mm -hmm. so i had fear then they spoke to me and spoke to me as well. and being a new found father mm -hmm. i started doing something i stopped my crazy investments like you bring your portfolio to me i was investing in we lose money i'll be the first laughing like ah shit, okay let's do it again wow. so i've never i've never so they said no stop the crazy financial antics mm. you need to play safe you need to do trust funds now you need to do close accounts you need to you know build focus on the real estate let's build it now mm. there's a legacy that must be done mm. that was fear okay that was fear and then they, they, they also started talking, oh, you can, do you know the kind of thrill I get from my airplane jumps, those matters? It tells me I'm, I'm, I'm a God. Mm. It tells me that I'm, I'm fearless. Like you're invasive. Yeah, that's what God designed you to think. So, so when that thing happened, for two years, I didn't take any risk. No financial risk. I got this little suburban home that I'll go in there, you know, you know, with the daddy t-shirts. I grew a nice pot belly. I wasn't walking out like that anymore. I was looking absurd. And then one day I woke up and I said, I have to do something dangerous. <laughs> so, somebody, sorry for that. Somebody just said, I, I don't read your comments. I should read your comments and your questions too. Mm -hmm. I'll try and do that. Now, um, um, Noni Koliki said, nice combination. Calm dad, cowboy mom. Yes. That, Calm that, dad, that's a, cowboy that's, mom. That's how it works. That's how it works. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I'll try and read some of your messages for him. Right? I'm so sorry about that. I'm, they are accusing you. So like, please read our messages. Read them. Okay, family. let me finish the narrative. Then we'll yeah, then we will, I'll come to yeah. you. So, let, so let's finish the narrative. Yeah. Of, uh, so yeah. I woke up one morning mm. and I, Zambia, they invited me for this event in Zambia. So when I got there, I tweaked the crew. I told them that, hey, let's go to, you know, there's this place where Livingstone, that's mm. where the, the highest budget jumping is. Apparently, their king, forgive me, your majesty, you know, you love your son. Anyway, their king jumped that place and shit his pants. Oh, he didn't want to be here. That place. <laughs> <laughs> so, Will Smith. Yeah, Will Smith. Yeah. Will Smith. Yeah. Will Smith. Went there and jumped and pissed his back. And they were like, <laughs> like screaming like a little girl. No, Will took it like an actor. <laughs> so I said, oh my God, what will I do? So I said, I'm going to jump there. This will kill everything. Now, for some people, it's nothing. Maybe they will hear a word or read a book, or watch something, they will have themselves. But me, I have to do something extreme. That's the only way that will kill me. Mm. I think that's the So I went there. So I told them I wanted to sightsee. I wanted to see the Victoria Falls. So they. A lot of their games, they feed down there with me. Early in the morning, mm -hmm. I didn't eat. This place is so bad that when you get there, they will make you sign a paper to say that if anything goes wrong and you die, you're on your own. Mm -hmm. It's for three stickers all over the world. So apparently, there's a river down there that's got crocodiles. Mm -hmm. you know? So, and they weep before them. They no, the river is down. Yeah, with okay. a yeah, so yeah, you don't also, jump well. You if, go yeah, you go to the river. That's the cushion. But it, it's, it's a still water, so there are crocodiles nesting in the sun just three meters away. And you know how fast those suckers swim? They'll get to you before you get out. So basically, there was a, a Swedish lady one week before then that the ropes broke. <laughs> so all my narratives were not going well. So you will sign that if anything goes wrong. So while I was signing, I had somebody video it. I told them that, listen, if I don't make this jump and I fall into that river, they should understand how much they love me in Nigeria. They'll go war. They will come and clean up that country. All the commandos in Nigeria come for them. So they should better think twice about killing me. So everybody there better be praying that I made this jump. I signed it. So it was while I was up there, I didn't know somebody called the national TV. Okay. So you can imagine my crew in the hotel having breakfast. And they were watching like, oh, Jimmy Sabat. <laughs> oh my God. So they went crazy and started driving to the, to, to to the, the place. Location. Yeah. It's on my, if you go to my IG page, okay. you see I shared it there. Mm. So I jumped. I jumped 313 feet meters. Okay, meters upside down wow. to to prove to myself that I've forgotten myself. So when I came down, when I jumped it, I was dangling. Everybody was like, I was screaming like, you know, like <laughs> having a good time, you know. And when they brought me back up, I just understood that this is this is I can't run away from who I am. This is this is who I am. 
You know, the, the more you try to become something else, the more you lose yourself. Yeah. This is who I am. I can't mm -hmm. actually stop it. This is who my son would love me for. This is who anybody that would love me would love me for. I can't be anybody else. I would, you know, so that's it. So all these qualities that you have, all these, you know, these adventures that you've gone through, has it been influenced by your passion for film? Um, not, not in the exact opposite mm -hmm. way. It's not a direct. You know, there was no direct it. influence. It was mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. your upbringing it, it, yourself. It, it, it's just, it's just always been, um, you know, how I find, you know, when I went on that path of self discovery, mm -hmm. I discovered certain things that scared me, that exhilarated me, that also disappointed me about myself. Mm -hmm. So I said, let me walk ground up. The thing that disappointed me about myself, I will build, I will okay. change, okay. I will reinstate. The things that exhilarated me about myself, I'll curb it because those were the dangerous things, like. I want to get a car and drive on the autobahn at 200 kilometers per hour. I have to, I'm a father now. So I have to curb, know how to manage my excitement. Then the things that exalted me about myself, I will amplify. Mm. Things like creating the best films, mm. things like being a better businessman, a better leader, a better follower. I've never followed anything in my life. And that's where I, that's one skill set I lack drastically. To be a good leader, you must be a good follower. I've mm. never followed anybody. So I started to seek out mentors. Seek out people that were better at me at this. Mm. People that, that had done it under great duress and succeeded from it. And I started following them. Physically, directly, or indirectly. I Please ask him if he has interest in politics. Jen Brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have interest in politics? I was, uh, I'm going to be deputy governor of my state under a party. Mm. Um, not to read about three years ago, but the waters of politics is so murky. Want over? It has no, it's not a Ghanaian narrative. <laughs> Our own is so murky. There's no water there, sir. You know. So, but we're doing. We're trying to change the narrative. Mm -hmm. We're saying maybe the next dispensation when they yeah. come in, let's let's foster these people in. And after that, I think the narrative will change because our millennials, our young people, have already proved that this is not the order of the day anymore, that they cannot be ignored. Mm. They have to find a voice. Mm. So I, I like to think that we will project and amplify that voice better than the others. Okay. So this one is to instate ourselves, the right people, support the right people in. Mm. And after that, we'll sit down to a table and say, okay, your time is up. Can we come in now and deal with these people? Because we're the immediate past generation of those people and we understand them better than you. You people are the 10th generation past. <laughs> Hello. So let's um, let's um, let's change the narrative slightly, and that's our plan. Thank you very much. Um, my boss is here, he's, uh, Mr. Kosia Waje. Um, he, he's my boss here, and um, I I want to invite him to the conversation because it's getting so interesting, and I think he needs to be. Boss, I'm sure I have just maybe two questions. Okay. I don't know. Maybe as we go on, if it's going to. Increase mm -hmm. uh, not everybody likes us. There are some people that also post bad comments about us. Mm -hmm. For those people, what is going to happen to them? Um, no, I was just trying to mimic that, that, that you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. uh, that was the first uh, one. Okay, okay we did you. Uh, so, <laughs> you came with a mimic. <laughs> you came with a mimic. Okay, please have a question. <laughs> No, the question is going to come. Okay, I mean, I just okay, okay, decided to just okay, okay, get you on the wrong foot on that one. Okay. That's a good one. A good I mean, I just one. love that bit about uh, when you say for those behind mm -hmm. us, thunder fire. Yeah. By the time you turned, everybody was gone. <laughs> we're, we're at um, PH. Um, you know, those guys are really good guys. We just mm -hmm. had. Um, there's something I'm doing that's totally different again from the narrative. Okay. Um, it's a Robin Hood propensity. And my rich friends will probably find this, take this badly. Robin Hood but is like still from the rich. Yeah, okay, you see? But well, we change the narrative. <laughs> so I thought every time my fans, especially, um, I felt premiers are catering to a certain class of people. Mm. You understand? Premiers, all over, always cater to a certain class. And I wanted to change that. Okay. Don't, is, that class didn't make you. That class made you midway your journey and became part of you. The class that made you are here on the bottom. Mm. They're the ones that supported you, whether you're right or wrong. They're the ones that pushed you, that believed in you. They even criticized you at your, not your finest moments. And you rose to the occasion and became better. They are the ones that have known me since I was 20 till mm. now. So I felt far more loyalty for them. So what I said was that those guys, 
those students, those people that scream or you know, scream everywhere I go, come and watch this movie free of charge. Free of charge. Mm -hmm. My super rich friends pay for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you support me, buy out the theater. I could have easily taken that one to put in my pocket and come out and say it's the highest grossing film of all time. I didn't do that. I told them, pay the theaters, buy out five for me. So different narratives. I call the board meeting for I I co own and own about six entities. So every time I call, they would think it's to discuss something important. I say, guys, I know everyone's sitting on this table are multi millionaires. You guys have taken me out on my birthdays or the occasions, I've been to your anniversaries, you all live in palatial homes. Okay? Um, one million is nothing. You. I want if you guys know Naira, okay. it's nothing to you. No, I won't ask them dollars, they kick me out of that. <laughs> so I said, Listen, you guys, do you guys know if each of you bring 500,000 or 1 million? I can buy four theaters. And if I buy four theaters, I'll give it to students and you couples and low income owners. Come on, watch this film free. If you want to support me, that's the support I want here. And they did, they moved in their numbers. So in Lagos, we did four in theaters in Abuja we did six wow. we didn't have enough theaters so we had about 150 people outside that couldn't come in mm. in Potako we did four in this thing we did three so it's only in Ghana I couldn't do it mm. everybody will actually wait is this a scam I said no I don't need the money it's just for your people to come and enjoy this film free so that's what we've been doing that's what my that's the premise that my the context of my of my peer premier so far this is our sixth city is there no any underlining benefit i mean from what you the picture you painting mm -hmm. to us that okay well um you want the super rich to pay mm -hmm. i mean the people down there mm -hmm. which are your real supporters mm -hmm. not to pay i sure there's no benefit that is near to you no i don't want you to read this as an ominous one let's go on the sports the, you know the intent in the beginning. Um, I know you're trying to ask really good questions and mm -hmm. all that, but please, it's a legacy I'm trying to build. I, I don't want it to be distorted. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's personal interest in everything you do. Mm -hmm. The degree of your interest is what makes you remain. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the money, one word or the other, will come back to me as a sharing factor. Mm -hmm. But also understand this: I could have taken that money and I'll owe nobody an explanation. Mm -hmm. And I, it it does impose a service of sort. At a high degree, because understanding if I leave everything to the narrative, these guys who go to their private screenings, that is what they do. That's why I say they caters to a certain sort. Mm -hmm. I have friends that will never sit in the public space and watch a film. They don't, they don't do it home and abroad. Mm -hmm. They buy private screening, pay two hundred and seventy k, sit down there with their family, watch your film, and tell you, Jim did a fantastic <laughs> job, and they walk away. Yeah. People that will still these two these two cities and 20 or 30 cities you think is a snap to you is a great deal for somebody yeah. this person supports me but cannot cannot afford my product okay i can't find once every single person and say take 30 cities say, i'll run out of money yeah. but also have people that this thing is a snap for them okay by by all by all intents and purposes 1000 cities doesn't mean much to you by the grace of God, mm. you just you understand. Yeah. Now, if I say, pay one thousand cities that probably six hundred of that city will come to me, mm. but that's that one thousand will buy tickets for at least two hundred Ghanaians to go and watch the film. Okay, you've done a great service. The, the narrative that the part of the money comes to me is not the question yeah. anymore. Yeah. You know, I could have done it because one or the other, or like the money is coming back to me. Sure. But I'm saying while I'm making money, can I sleep better at night by giving this service to people that can't afford it? Afford. Okay, so that's it. Uh, that, that's really it. And why should I pay for it? You call yourself my fan and you're, and you're super rich. Go pay for this people. <laughs> you understand me? Like the, the people at the, the highest realm have said it. Steven Spielberg woke up one day and they asked him, how come you take such risks? And he said, no. Mm. I built my career to a point after my 10-year run of heartbreaks of hard pressure, of surviving hospital bends and all that, I felt I gave my blood, tears, and pain to this industry enough that people should be paying for my creativity. People should be paying for me to be heard. So in Africa, it's not the narrative. We are still using our money to create this content. So the least we can do is get our rich friends to pay for people that can afford it. Beautiful. I'm just I'm one, one of the time, so. I just asked one yeah. question. And I think you've been in this country for some days now. Yes, sir, about four um, now. Yeah, this project is your own project, right? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Okay, it's your own project. Yes. Um, if 
were to be, let's say, someone's project, you're just starting it, mm -hmm. with this kind of drive, uh, would you have maybe, I mean, put in the same drive? You know, I've officially decided this man is brilliant. Seriously, I'm not saying. I think the little one, I don't, I don't. I'm coming to the main question. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care to people with this thing. But mm. you know what? Isn't that the reason we try to do it by ourselves? Why did you set up this station? Why did you do it? Why are you here, the CEO, asking me questions? Isn't that the same reason that I'm doing this for myself? And I cannot give the same degree of passion if somebody else were to own the platform. I understand what it took me to put money in this. I understood what it took me personally to create this. I understood the human resources that was expended to bring this. If it were to be somebody else that brought me on this platform to do it, they would never do it as a personal choices and demand wants me to. And I don't also forget, you think it's cheap to come out here? A lot of people have this opportunity, but they will not tax themselves financially to do it. Every premiere that I executed took me over forty thousand dollars of my personal money. Don't forget, this movie is still in safe theaters. I've not gotten the money. So everything I did is to promote it, is to show a certain barrier, to set the precedence of my personal funds, because the distributor hands off a long time ago and say, Charlie, we're here to make sure your film goes everywhere. We're not here to spend extra money until we've seen money. Yeah. How will you see money if you don't spend the money and push it to different people? So I've been on great film projects that I call the producer and say, hey, let's do three cities. He will sit down and calculate the business class you need to move Jim High from back to the logistics. And then he will say, you know what? Nah, let it go organically. I don't want the organic push. But actually, this was just to compliment um, or to say kudos to you because I haven't seen this in a very long while. Getting someone with so much drive, passion, and everything pushing. That's why I wanted. I mean, I'm just asking first of all to get an understanding that it is your own project that you're doing and the the drive with which I mean, it's, attached, yeah. no, it's not even about that. It's about just to encourage people that. Look, this is how we do it. This is how it's done. Because we don't even see it in this country. Mm -hmm. You've moved from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. When people are doing their own projects in this country, you don't see this push, this drive, this energy to make to it move happen. because you've done Nigeria. You've now come to Ghana and you're still with that energy, mm -hmm. you're pushing it. Mm -hmm. It's just I ask this question just to let it serve as an encouragement, inspiration for mm -hmm. some people who also in their own state like in your state, uh, who are now producing. To also learn and simplify. Okay, this is how we do it. You don't. I'm sure you not even end uh, in Ghana. Mm -hmm. You're probably going to other countries I'm as still well. Houston, Paris, and then um, London. Today. So it's just mm -hmm. to say kudos to you. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I, mean, I love the energy thank with you. which you're doing appreciate this thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, yeah. yeah. All right, Jane, Thank you so. Go check my stuff so online. I'm proud of anything you do. Go online. I be proud blogger. Go online. So Wikimedia.com. Go online. Go check my stuff online. Proud of anything.